right guys well I don't know if it's a cloudy or a smoky chilly evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here uh, we are at Thursday night July 22nd 2021 on this cool crisp evening and I've got some hip campers coming in any minute so now so I'm gonna make today's I wasn't planning to do a chronicle of the collapse today but I want to thank uh, alert uh, listener Dan Smetana I guess is how we pronounce Dan's name uh, and I really appreciate Dan uh, his very kind contribution towards our new kitchen fund here at the hip camp at Bugs in a Jar Farm and uh, so Dan has included a uh, he is you know I, I've been confused about this whole concept of net zero emissions I just usually just hit the BS button I, I admit guys I have never sat down and taken the time to really dig to the bottom of net zero emissions saving the planet uh, you know I'm pretty sure the United Nations and uh, China and Joe Biden are all big champions of net zero emissions so uh, realizing my confusion Dan Smetana now guys I have not I have not vetted Dan's work but but Dan has put a lot of work into helping us understand this and I really appreciate what Dan has done for me and I'm going to share this with the tribe for anybody trying to understand now I'm not sure what Dan's resume looks like but he's clearly an intelligent articulate man so uh, Dan Smetana is going to explain to us what net zero emissions are well mainly how are we going to save the planet by reaching net zero fossil fuel emissions I guess between now and the year 2800 or whenever okay um, so I believe he's from Australia not New Zealand did I say New Zealand I'm in Australia anyway take it away Dan inspired and elated by our politicians local councils districts states countries powers and even superpowers presidential speeches and pledges about net zero emissions in a few decades i thought i should find out how are we going to do that here are a few lines from an article titled net zero emissions explained so he did not give me a link to this article he just quoted uh, so this is just what some of his research uncovered quote <clears throat> getting to net zero means we can still produce some emissions as long as they are offset by process processes that reduce greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere for example these could be things like plant planting new forests or drawdown technologies like direct air capture the more emissions that are produced the more carbon dioxide we will eventually need to remove from the atmosphere this is called sequestration to reach net zero and then he had dot 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 quote mark so anyway uh, this is a, an example of what Dan was learning so now he took it from there so this is Dan from this point forward this is Dan speaking to us but of course we don't only need to get to net zero emissions we also want to keep reducing co2 in our atmosphere to around 350 parts per million so here are a few figures i looked up and a few simple calculations to ponder on the topic of net zero emissions okay again i have not gone through and checked dan's uh math 
and research here. So I'm, I'm trusting the man is correct on his research. <clears throat> okay. The Earth's atmosphere mass, otherwise known as the weight of the Earth's atmosphere, is somewhere around five and a half quadrillion tons. One quadrillion ton equals one million billion tons. And so then he, then he shows in a number what that looks like. It means one part per million for 5.5 billion tons. We are currently on about 415 parts per million of CO2 in our atmosphere. And of course, nowhere do we talk about uh, methane, nitrous oxide, all the rest is just CO2, just conveniently ignoring all those other pesky greenhouse gases, namely methane, not counting them. We're currently on about 415 ppm CO2 in our atmosphere. If we want to get it close to 350, we would need to get, you know, at this point, about 65 parts per million, you know, suck it out of the atmosphere. One part per million from 5.5 quadrillion equals 5.5 billion, 65 times 5.5 equals 357.5 so in tons 65 parts per million equals according to his math 360 billion tons all we need to do all we need to do is plant enough trees and build enough co2 sequ sequestration plants to suck out 360 billion tons of CO2 and bingo soon all will be good as gold again. Now let's look at some figures. Imagine just for fun that we would instantly reverse, instantly reverse all of our world power stations to suck out CO2 instead of emitting it at the same rate. There are currently 62,500 power stations in the world, and they produce about 10 billion tons of CO2 per year. So from this moment of our imaginary experiment, they would be removing 10 billion tons of CO2 per year. At the same time, we would, of course, totally stop. We would stop all CO2 emissions from all other sources, which would be hard. Power generation, for instance, amounts only to about one-third of those global emissions. <coughs> Done all that, so do all of that, it still takes us <coughs> 36 years to get our 360 billion tons of CO2 by 10 billion tons per year. Now, let's be more realistic. Let's be more realistic and let's say that while all of our reversed power stations are removing CO2 from the air, we would only, you know, realistically half the emissions from all our other activities. In that scenario, we would still emit one third of the e emissions we are emitting today. So CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere would still be rising only a bit slower. <clears throat> uh, of course, the above scenario is an impossible fantasy. Also, for simplicity, I left out the facts about our ever-increasing population, consumption, and energy man demands, and therefore, 
inevitably rising emissions. Additionally, the so-called renewable energy sources presented as a solution, as we've been over how many times, will need more metal ore mines, more coal mines, more metal smelters, cement plants, roads, factories, global transport, etc. to be implemented and maintained. And surprise, surprise, we also need expanding agriculture so we can all eat. These activities that keep us alive all run on oil, coal, and gas. All of nature's feedback loops that have been increasingly feeding CO2 into our atmosphere have been left out of, uh, of his figures, of course. All of those, and nowhere does Dan mention methane and all the rest of them. So, the obvious conclusion from this imaginary scenario and a few simple calculations is that we have exactly net zero chance of reducing anything. The announcements about it are the only are only the exhalations of hot air and bull dust in urgent need of sequestration. Signed Dan Smenata in the lucky country down under. So there you go guys. You heard it first right here on Collapse Chronicles and I do want to thank Brother Dan for that elucidating commentary so now I know everything I need to know about net zero emissions. Uh, it is a joke. It is kicking the can down the road of the highest order. It is one of the brightest of the bright green lies from AOC, Joe Biden, and China Incorporated. Uh, but anyway, I have got to wrap up this ramp uh, because I, oh no, I need to run up and make sure there's not a puddle of water in my hip camper's tent before they get here any minute. Get out there and sequester your carbon and reach your own net zero emissions while you still can. Bye guys.